China in a better position than Ch uh, than the U.S. when it comes to this fallout, but China will be hurt nonetheless. Obviously, these things are negative for everybody. It's a, it's a lose-lose situation for both the U.S. and China. But China is uh, responding to this in a way that I think is very sensible. They're weakening their currency, and uh, they will be able to adjust to this. At the end of the day, this is going to be a negative thing. And it's, I believe, a political uh, expedient more than uh, an economic one. The, we're approaching the midterms. The U.S. needs a scapegoat. China's a very convenient one. And uh, we are uh, moving forward on, on really on that basis from a political standpoint. We heard the UBS CEO slightly earlier. He says that UBS has reduced its exposure to emerging markets. Yet, Templeton says maybe the worst is over for emerging markets. Where do you sit? Well, where we sit is that emerging markets is a universe made up of multiple different economies. Some of them have current account surpluses. Some of them have current account deficits. Some of them have exposure to the, uh, to the rising um, uh, oil price, which is a negative. Um, some of them do not. Um, and so I think to bundle all of emerging markets into the same pot is, is frankly um, a, a, a ridiculous uh, uh, approach to emerging markets. You have to be more focused on those that are going to come out of this malaise uh, as, uh, in, a, in a strong position. Unfortunately, we live in a world where f flows impact emerging markets in a very indiscriminate way. All of them tend to be impacted during a risk-off um, uh, a period. So we're now moving into a period where a lot of those economies have adjusted and are representing extraordinarily good value. We actually see good value in Colombia, in Peru, the Andean economies. We see a lot of value in Southeast Asia. And indeed, if you look at what's happened to the market in India, notwithstanding the weakness of the currency, the market has been very strong. So not all of these markets are uh, enduring the sort of malaise that people are very keen to paint a picture of. Uh, but Simon, it's interesting. You mentioned Asia seems to be quite resilient as well. But what happens when we see these U.S.-China trade tensions ratchet up further, compounding with this fall in EM? I, you know, you take a look at South Korea, Taiwan. These economies essentially do have current account surpluses, but they're also their exposure to China and the trade risk is also much greater as well. So who, which economies in particular do you think have been unfairly punished? I think the, um, some of the economies uh, like um, Indonesia have been unfairly punished. Uh, the, 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 we've been through a very long period over the last 10 years in the post-GFC environment where these economies' currencies have already been through a 50% readjustment against the US dollar. And we're now in a position where we are seeing what appeared to be a reversal uh, switching back. So the US dollar is strengthening again. We're not going to see a wholesale recovery in emerging markets until we see a reversal of US dollar strength. And of course, the whole rhetoric, the whole story that's coming out of the US is all about supporting the US dollar. There they have a, a, a trillion, a, a 20 trillion dollars of public debt. This is a, an immense problem, and it's growing by a trillion. It's forecast to grow in 2019 by another trillion dollars. The U.S. has to fund it by selling and keeping confidence in the U.S. dollar. Uh, and they will continue to pursue this story that uh, the U.S. dollar must remain strong. Part of the adjustment mechanism for, current, for, for economies that are suffering in this environment is weakness of their currency. So, Conversely, that actually helps many of these emerging market economies uh, sustain growth. And if you look at global GDP, over 60% of that is now coming from emerging market developed world economies, as developing uh, world economies, as opposed to the developing world. I'm very cautious about the outlook for the US. I think uh, that uh, the growth in that economy has been driven largely by um, stock buybacks, 40% of earnings growth has come from uh, share buybacks. And although there is a recovery after a 10-year hiatus of virtu virtually negligible growth, the growth isn't particularly thrilling in the, in the United States. We've got much better growth in emerging markets. People are very, very keen to write off emerging markets in the context of yeah. a period of dollar strengthening.